Is that Quentin Sands I just saw leaving? Mm-hmm. You know him? I know of him. Why was he holding your hands? Kissing them? What are you implying, Harvey? I don't know. Maybe you two are going steady. I was implying that it looked like he was grateful to you for taking his case. Good, because that's exactly what it was. That's a bad move. We may make money billing out on their defense, but when we lose, which we will, it's going to hurt us in the long run. How do you know we'll lose? Because it's my job to know, and his company's ALS wonder drug is killing people. ALS is incurable. And everyone who is taking that drug is going to die anyway. Hmm. That's your defense. If he kills them a little faster, it's a public service? Our defense is those allegations are untrue. He has taken this story all over town, and not a single firm thinks he has a case. Which is why he came to me. Because he wants someone who believes in him. And what is it exactly that makes you believe in him? Well, I got to know his character pretty well during the time that we were married. Quentin is expecting you tomorrow. You forgot this last night. I didn't forget that. I have no intention of taking this case. Though, I did get you this. What is it? Wedding gift. I'm sorry it's so late, but it's hard to be on time when I never knew you were married. Are you seeing anyone, Harvey? Hmm? You don't want to tell me, and I don't really care, because you and I share the same trait of keeping our personal lives personal. You were married. It happened when you were at Harvard. It didn't work out. We were too dedicated to our careers, and that's all I'm going to say about it. OK. You're right. It's none of my business. I'm still not taking this case. Why is that? Because sometimes I do things that my clients don't like, and if their ex-wives are looking over my shoulders, that's not really a problem. But when their ex-wives are also my managing partner, that hamstrings me. And if I'm going to turn this loser into a winner, I can't be hamstrung. I can't have that. Do what you got to do. You won't interfere? What did I just say? Do you have any idea how hard it is to develop a new drug if you're not Pfizer or Amgen or Merck? This is important, Harvey. If Quentin came to you looking for someone who trusts him, why aren't you handling this case yourself? That's none of your concern. Well, I'm not asking you as your colleague. I'm asking you as Quentin's attorney. After Quentin and I separated, he started seeing one of his research consultants, Lisa. They're still together, but he never married her. She doesn't want me on the case. Oh, terrific. You're sticking me with a losing case and a girlfriend who isn't going to like me any more than she likes you. Well, I'm sure it's not the first time someone hasn't liked you, Harvey. Who doesn't like me? You a baseball fan? I am. Then I assume you know Lou Gehrig was a bad man. I mean, they didn't call him the Iron Horse for nothing. Then he got ALS. You know what it did to him? His hands locked up, then his legs, his speech, eventually his breathing. Couldn't control him. His mind knew what it wanted, but his body, he was trapped inside, unable to do anything. Even today, you get ALS within three to five years, you die. Or sooner if someone takes your drug and their liver fails. Our drug makes people's remaining years better, and it doubles their life expectancy. Except for the people whose livers are failing. You don't Lisa. Know. I can see why Jessica likes you. You cut through the That's something I always loved about her. She just does it with a little less charm than I do. Isn't she a little taller than you? It's the heels. Let me tell you what it takes to get a drug approved today. We were $139 million into development before we ever hit the shelves. We jumped through every hoop they threw at us, and we proved our drug was safe for eight years. So you're saying these claims are baseless? We're talking about six terminal patients with a wide array of medical issues, and they're saying my company's drug caused this. They were drinking coffee on the Titanic. I don't think that put Leonardo DiCaprio in the water. Since Jessica vouched for you, I'm going to go ahead and believe what you're telling me. But since these other firms determine you have exposure, here's what we're going to do. We're going to pay them. We're going to pay them a little bit of money so you can keep saving lives. Because if we drag this out, people won't think of your drug as a way to save lives. They'll think of it as a death sentence. You're late. Look, it was Lewis's pro bono. I, uh... Wait, that's my suit. My extra suit from my office. Yeah, it's uh, Lewis's fault. I went to the client's place. It was overrun with bed bugs, so I went back to the office. Oh, you tracked bed bugs into my office? No. Oh, you walked in there naked? No, Donna met me in the downstairs men's room and... Okay, Donna's fired, 
and you're buying me an extra suit. By the way, that's a three-piece suit. Where's the vest? Yeah, I've been meaning to talk to you about that. Vest? Really? Says the guy with the bike helmet. Uh, safety first. Come on. Ah, the house that Emma Link's built. Nice. Very nice. Colin Church, Mr. Sands, and Mr. Specter lately arrived to our little legal dispute. You say legal dispute, I say shakedown. Always a fine line between the two, n'est-ce pas? Look, we could sit here and posture about the strengths and weaknesses of our cases, but frankly, that's going to bore the hell out of me. Seriously? It could be much lower. It could be much higher. Let's pretend it's just right. My clients' lives are being cut short. And according to accepted calculations, the current value of a life is $7.9 million. You're not even offering pennies on that. Those happen to be EPA calculations based on a full life expectancy. Adjusted for plaintiffs whose expectancy is just a fragment of this yields a value of $143,427. Approximately. What your child fails to understand is that for someone with only three to five years to live, each day is worth infinitely more. But the real crux is the punitive damages, because if your client wants to sell me the idea that he didn't know about these side effects years ago, I'm not buying it, which is why we want $250 million. What? Quentin. No, oh, this is outrageous. Do you know what you're doing? You're bankrupting this company and taking away years of life from real people who are walking, talking, and breathing easier because of the drug we make. I don't represent those people. My clients... A tenuous claims at best. And unless one of your six is Rupert Murdoch, you're out of your mind. <sighs> OK. You printed that? Well, not yet, but I will. You realize that's libelous. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But after it runs, you and I both know it won't much matter. We're done here. I don't take to extortion. I'm not going to be bullied by an ambulance chaser, no matter how nice the suit. It is nice, isn't it? Italian, and it fits. $250 million, Mr. Sands. I'll give you four days. If church wants to play, we play. I have housing court in the morning. It's housing court. Your grandmother could win. Let's see just how real his client's liver problems are. And if they are real, we suggest they're from the disease itself, or they took the wrong dose, or they took a cocktail of combined drugs. Also, I want to see Quentin's company financials. I already asked for them once. I want you to call them and follow up. I want to know everything Church could go after. So we've gone from settlement to scorched earth. I didn't feel like writing a quarter billion dollar check. It's a negotiation. Exactly. That's why I'm arming myself for the next round. By digging into Quentin. I'm a Boy Scout. I like to be prepared. So you think you'll look like a Boy Scout by putting dying people on the stand and tearing them apart? You're going to look like an asshole. For every one they claim has a side effect, we have 600 who don't. And if I need to look like an asshole to convince the jury that hundreds are more important than the one, I'm not going to lose a minute's sleep over it. Well, I have court in the morning. Oh, I'm, I'm not clear. Was this a conversation with my managing partner or my client's ex-wife? You need to settle this case, Harvey. Which I will do if you stay out of it, as you promised. Make it go away. 